And one, two, three, and we are live. Remember everyone, A's are frazzles and D's get degrees. I'm here today with my foreign friend, Jesper. Um, if this is the first episode you're choosing to listen to, a little bit on me. Uh, I am a one-of-a-kind college student, I would say. I've been to not one, not two, not three, but four different colleges in my undergrad. I started out going to college at a small private school up here in New Hampshire with my hometown best friend and my longtime girlfriend. Then I transferred to the University of Arkansas, down south, Bible Belt, SEC, football, a lot of fun. Then I went to a commuter school in the middle of the city, uh, UMass Boston, and now I attend the number one party school in all of Massachusetts, ZooMass, UMass Amherst. And my friend today is part of my fraternity, a exchange student um, from the great country of Norway. Hey, Jesper, and welcome. How we doing? I want to give a real shout out to uh, the Norwegian Loan Fund Office. Without them, I would definitely not be here. So yeah. Hey, Norway, making great change. Probably yeah. better than America. But um, <laughs> we're doing fine. We're doing fine. Uh, so, uh, Jesper, you want to talk about a little bit about your journey to America? What college is different between here and there, and uh, what made you want to come to America? Yeah, so I originally started uh, doing my undergrad in Oslo. Um, it was fine. Um, I also just moved out at the time, but it was just like not enough. It was kind of weird thinking about it. I was just feeling like I wasn't really doing a lot. I was going to school, going to gym, but that was like pretty much it. It was it was a good social part, but it was just like I needed something different. So like. Would you say it was not a big social part? So do you have like dorms or is it like more of like a high school setting in a, like America high school? So like there isn't really a college in Norway. It's more like um, people go. It's like a community college. Okay. People don't live on campus. Like they, they live at home. They just like they go to the clubs like every other people. And you have like you have organizations and uh, social cliques within like the Norwegian type of college too. But it's just like not that dorm life it's more or s- more campus life there's no campus no campus so it's more similar to like high school right yeah um so what is high school like in norway though high school is also kind of different because we do um only three years but we also finish a year later than americans and it's it's kind of hard to say it's i think it's harder but i don't really know because I just know like a bunch of my classes from Norwegian high school transferred to like my college, my undergrad, and I found that funny. But it's it's more focused towards let's say like I decided to be a musician, so obviously I went to kind of high school that is for musicians. So that's a lot different than here. So that's yeah. like um, like we have like trades in some of like our high schools, and like so we have AP classes that you can take in high school, which are like advanced level that will yeah. transfer to college. But you say like most of your classes transferred from your high school. I would say like uh, like a good chunk. Good chunk. Like probably took um, half year off or year off my like the, the credits. That's not bad no. at all. But then, so you studied school to be a musician. How does that work? How did, like, how did you end up in, like, is that something, like, when you're young, you take, like, a test, and then they put you in, like, the position? So, like, if you're an athlete or something, you go to, like, athlete so, school? So, no. So, like, you had to try out. Uh, you go to and have an audition, showcase your talents. Um, and so my primary was guitar. So I was the winter, and I play guitar. And then you, based on that and your GPA, you get in or not. So I didn't get into, like, my first uh, choice, but... Uh, because of my try, I made it into the other one. So, so you did. Um, this is for high school or just for college? Uh, that was for high school so strictly. I, yeah. I, and then, so college. How did? So how does college work? Is so I get like I I took a year off. We're just a music teacher, um, and then I applied to uh, a college, private college. It was actually a really small college. Um, I would say maybe like 2,000 students and like uh, there you go you have about four classes like you don't select your classes they get selected for you and strictly based on your major so I did I did a business and it was only business classes like I didn't have any elective no gen eds no just like you don't take English you don't got to take science no you only got to take what's like directly related to your uh, major so I did that and 
it was very different. Like our stats classes was pretty much six hour long twice a day, and I failed. I failed hard, and I got here, and I got 105. So I think like classes are covering a lot more like broader um, and yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's also no like classes you have to go to. There's no mandatory classes that doesn't exist. So like it's kind of how like but you so if you do the work you'll get A's yeah. like you don't need to show up to class. But there's only like one assignment or one exam. Oh, so there's at the one, end of the year. So oh, so you, if you like you could take a class and you're already an expert on it, you can just pretty much just yeah. not go to class, show up, no, do yeah. the test. And um, but then again, if you don't do the work, you're really fucked because <laughs> it's a big big um, so like uh, or things to cover. There's a lot of things to cover like. I would say, like, my math classes here probably co- covers, like, one-fourth of what they did. Um, you want to talk a little bit about the difference between a type of, like, an, how the students are and how they, like, since you're saying there's one big test, I want, like, how are American students, you'd say, different? Like, are we more, we don't really care as much, we're not as intelligent just because we, like, have so many more opportunities? Or, like, so, do we don't take studying as hard? I think it all comes from, like, our... Um, high school education because it's very different. I think it's it's more focused on that you're supposed to learn how to follow like uh, the news picture or like mass uh, or mass media. I wouldn't say people are necessarily smarter. I would say they're more mature at an early age because like uh, people they get to drink while they're still living at home or like most people drink when they're still living at home. What is the drinking age? It's eighteen. 18. So when people come to college. They're usually, like, 20, 21. Like, they start college way later. And most of the people are very mature then by then. It's, uh, it's, we get as rowdy as you guys, but I would say we get rowdy in a different way. Because it's, we're always at clubs. There's no, like, house parties. It's anymore. not house parties. There's no, like, you've been sheltered in high school, coming to college for the first time, you're tasting alcohol, and you're like, this is incredible, yeah. and you'd, like, want to just yeah, do it Yeah, no, every exactly. Day. Like, I remember my first day uh, coming to this school. I was walking around with my old international buddies, <laughs> and uh, it was just, like, people, and especially girls, getting transported everywhere. Like, it was a fucking jungle. I was like, holy shit. Like, I, like, I didn't expect, like, this to be a party school at all. And just look at the shit. Like, uh, it was wild. But, uh, uh, yeah. No, definitely think that people go into college with a bit of different attitude. It's not, like, about necessarily party. It's about, like, you get friends, but you're kind of, like, grown up. It's, like, you have a family and you go out to the bars <laughs> to, like, be with your family or to, like, hook up with some girl. But it's just, here, it's just, it's a whole nother ball game. Well, I'm sure the women here do love the accent. But um, would you say that... Uh, being at this kind of environment where you have to take classes you don't want to take, uh, would you say that you would prefer the Norway system or like it's, has it like, what are some positives of this system? I would say of this system is that you can be the biggest bullshitter you want and still have it work. Like, I don't know anyone who has perfected like the art of bullshitting as much as me. Uh, I always been a bullshitter, like in every class I take, and I can like the class or I can hate the class. I'm just lazy as fuck, so I'll use every way I can to make sure I do as little and get as much out of it as possible. <laughs> um, so, like that's perfect. More in the Norwegian system because they don't really have to do much, but there's like if you want to get seen, you have to go to class anyway. So it's kind of kind of like I would say here, it's you have to bullshit all the time. Obviously, because you guys have a system where you have uh, a bunch of assignments, a bunch of exams, so you kind of have to like. You have to go. Like you have to always be. It's not something where you can just like get ready for the final and just bullshit the final. Like no, you have to. But like the thing is, it doesn't matter as much. Like no, the teacher. If you don't come to class, the teacher never sees you before an exam. Yeah, that's that's fine. But <laughs> then, like, if you fuck it up, you fuck it up. But here, it's like you have to like. If you deliver two or three exams late, then you're failing the class. Like, there's no, there's not as much leeway. Um, and here it's just, yeah. Are you, so are you saying that wait, there's not as much leeway in America because you, there's like more assignments. So that way, if you miss, if you miss more than one, you can't just like make it up in no, the end. Exactly. Uh, even though most teachers are not the strict as I thought, like I came into this first semester 
a year ago and thinking that shit was going to be really hard. Everything was going to be tough. And then I had my first couple classes and I'm like, wow. Um, for what did, what did they tell you about, like, what was your idea? Like, so you thought American like classes in college were hard, right? That's kind of what they do in high school here. They say it's very hard to get into college. Like in high school, you need to get really good grades. And then you become a senior in high school. You start applying to colleges and you're like freaking out. You're like, I don't even know if I'm going to get in. And then you usually, if you're, there's so many colleges in America, they need students. So they just pretty much end up letting everyone in as long as you're not like a 1.5 student so then people are like oh wait my whole life i've been told college is impossible and then they're like oh wait it's it, they just take everybody it's so like was it that is that kind of like the vibe that you got when you were coming here you're like it's gonna be so hard like gotta put in so much work to go to america and do college or was it like i would say like i come from a country where there's about 40 colleges yeah yeah um Imagine that. That's like the size of, or like it's about. There are probably same. forty colleges in between New Hampshire, Maine, New England. Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, not New England, Massachusetts. I'd say those three. But yes. Yeah. So I came in where like I I always do everything where I take everything very serious at the start because I think like if I don't I'm gonna fall up, like fall behind. And coming here, I did that too, and I thought it was very serious. But I just noticed the vibe, and I just saw how like much. Other college students were faking it too. Like people never talk in class. It's like no participation. And I kind of just got this lax vibe after talking to people too. Everything was like coming so clear. Like this is high school in a sense all over again. Like <laughs> I think you mentioned last episode. You said it's new high, and yeah, it is new high. Um. So after like a month, I just pretty much gave up. I just said, okay, my GPA will never matter from this school because if any person is um, like cares enough to check in where I got to go to school, they see that it's not really the best school. Um, so yeah, no, I now it's just like I know my GPA is above a three point oh, and that's all I need. Like it's yeah, like I know B B will get me a degree. Like if D can get you a degree, then I'm definitely sure that B can get me one. Exactly, but um. So do you think that most foreign exchange students, like all of your friends that aren't from Norway that like you've met from like all the other countries, what do they think about? Like is their system similar to yours or like do they come in too thinking this is going to be hard or are they a more lackadaisical? Um, I think a lot of the people, we have a very big uh, Asian population, especially the Chinese population. And I know the school gets a lot of money uh, or like this. Uh, just like funding extra funding from the state the more uh, asian population they have so they come into it like i like i got in the sense that everyone that comes here is obviously very rich and especially like people from like because you don't get do you guys get many scholarships or no you kind of much have to pay so pocket like i get scholarships from snoo i also like that's why i said shout out to my <laughs> loan fund office because they pretty much cover all my costs and it's a loan like you guys are but it's only one you only take one loan and it's a state-based loan so i pay that in the same like way as you guys do back but i also get 60 percent of it covered as long as i finish my education so they literally take they'll take the, the hit for the 60 percent yeah that's a uh, lot better shout out to sally may and everyone that gets those sally may loans here in america from the banks but also, would you say that now that you have you have friends uh, that are in other schools around the country that are in like more important schools? No, not important. I want to say more like prestigious schools than Southern New Hampshire University. Say it again, please. Um, do you have friends that go to other schools around the country that are more prestigious than Southern New Hampshire? Yes, I have a buddy that goes to um, Champaign, Illinois. Um, or, Shout out Champagne Animals. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's a big school from what I hear. He seems to have a good time. Um, so, yeah, definitely more prestigious school. But I feel like it doesn't really matter where you are as long as you know, like, how to attack it, like, how to bullshit it. There's a difference between SNU and Harvard, obviously. But I would say most big schools around the country, uh, I get the same feeling from students that they, like, they, like Norwegian students do the same. We do the same amount of work. But we don't try it as hard. Exactly. Like, I, it doesn't really matter in the big picture, like how good grades we get. Like 
everyone going back to Norway, they will see international uh, experience, and that will do a big part of it. Yeah, it's a lot different. Um, like, when I went to the University of Arkansas, uh, and I was a National Collegiate Scholar, which means I was in the top 20% of my class. Yeah. Um, the classes were a lot different. I mean, they, uh, most of the professors, I feel like the college really is about the professors you get and the type of students that are in your class, right? So I'd say, like, SNU, we probably, SNU in Arkansas, if I'm in a history class, I'm going to learn the same information. It's just my teacher is going to be someone in a, at a more prestigious school. Like in Harvard, you're going to have probably, like, someone that is so devoted in history, whereas here you might just have a history teacher that has just been at SNU. Hmm. Now, he still has a degree, and I just, and I don't think, it's like the professor, like, great professors are great professors, but the type of students in a SNU setting are a lot more broad. It's going to not be as people that are more into school because they're letting in such a wide amount of students. Whereas University of Arkansas, they're a little bit more uh, strict in who they let in mm -hmm. and their acceptance rate isn't as high. So you're going to have a lot more students with higher GPAs from high school. Not that saying that. But that's like, that's the culture of it is like people go into it expecting it's a, it's a big school. Like you have to, you have to get good, good GPA to follow. Here, people is like, as long as you get like a like a C in average, you're fine. Again, we have friends, we have friends that have graduated with these and they got degrees. And I'd say that they're doing a lot better than kids that we've known here that were like, I thought I, we've had some friends graduate from here that like I thought were going to do great things. Their presence in multiple clubs, and then they ended up just working the same entry-level sales job it yeah. seems every college student gets you want to talk a little bit about entry-level sales jobs especially yeah this is a this is a funny thing like i know in norway uh entry-level sales job is usually the things you get like it's the same as working at like a walmart you get it when you're 16 you were probably done with it by your 20 or if you're late in your college years maybe 21 but then you never work it again like that's like a thing i find amusing here that college is so expensive but most of the people, they just end up going for the easiest job to get, like the entries level sales job. And I think that's like American companies, they demand it. But I also think people are, when they're in college, they get too accustomed to where they are. And it's just, they want to stay here. So like they want to, they just want to familiar, like the things that are familiar, things they are comfortable with. So right after they're done, oh shit, I have a big loan. Okay. Like I could obviously go look for jobs for a half year until I find something I really want to do, or I can just get a job like a right away that covers like what I need to pay in loans and that it can feed me. So that being like, so I worked a sales job. Um, I worked for this company, True Green, um, that was selling lawn care, door to door, cold calling. Um, I ended up being a as a rookie. I set the sales record for rookies. I had seven cold call sales in one day. And I ended up bringing in, like, our you had to, for sales jobs for people that don't know what sales jobs are, right? So, when, out of college, you'll end up doing an entry-level sales job. So, you work for some company, and you'll sell some product. The way a sales, like, floor works, right? So, there's a bunch of people. You'll get a cubicle, or you'll have, like, an open thing with a chair. They'll give you a bunch of numbers to call, and you'll do cold calls. Cold calls are, you'll call... People or companies, depending on the product that your company sells. So, for my example, I was selling lawn care. So, I'd be selling former customers of True Green. They could be like seven years without us, or they could be a year or six months. You call, you have a script, which is your like your sales pitch, and a sales pitch is pretty much a script. It's like an actor script. You call, and then you will try and overcome the objections, right? And you get calls from telemarketers all the time. Think about that, like how annoying that is when someone yeah. calls you and you have to just hang up because you don't want to talk to them. So your job as a salesperson is to try and explain to this person why they need your product. So that's something I did, but I was also working with people that were like professional salesmen that have been doing this for 20 years, selling mint, like you know knives, working for food companies, selling liquor. And it's weird because you put like so much time into college and now kids are graduating and this is like, they're proud of like this sales job that like you can probably like, you're not, anything you learn in college does not teach you to do sales. I mean, yes, yeah, sales is more like, it's a, like a personal skill. I feel like, yeah, it's either you're good at it or you're dumb. It's like my, like if I, if I wasn't good at bullshitting, obviously I wouldn't do that because it would be exposed. But if you're a good sales, like salesperson, then you just, 
I feel like you just have that thing in you where you just know how to talk to people. It's like, you just like know how to say the right things to sway this person into buying something from you that you don't really give a fuck about. Like, exactly, right? And it's like sales is a numbers game, right? So like they're like want you to do a, hit a certain level of calls a day, a certain level of knocks if you're doing door to door, a certain level of – the more people you talk to in sales, the more likely you are to get a sale because the sales are out there. People, they'll just say yes right away because some people are just like, okay, cool. But like a great salesperson can – like so say they're in 100 – calls there's two yeses and five maybes a great salesman can get those five maybes to yeses a bad salesperson will still get the two it's just like it's literally a numbers game but the problem with that is like most people sales jobs have high turnover rates turnover rate means the amount of people that work there and then after a certain amount of time quit right so it would be like if there are 10 people on a sales team the turnover rate 75 that means uh about seven of the whole 10 switch every couple of months hmm. because sales is very hard, especially you know, like coming out of college, you'll probably work a lot of sales jobs. Cause you'll just be like, I don't want to sell this product. And you'll keep then looking for another sales job for a product. Maybe you care more about, or maybe you're like, crap, I can't do sales. Cause I don't know how to talk to people. No, exactly. And I think, yeah, I think it's a culture of it here. I think those are people there. I don't know, they're just like, they're coming off like this, when you come off a huge, like, high, and you're kind of unsure, unsure, like, like, you feel groggy, like, people, it just comes off college, like, this incredible composition of drugs, alcohol, and some academic games, but, but it's, not, it's just like, yeah. they don't know what to do, and like, like, hey, like, your resume looks great, let's sell some fucking furniture for us <laughs> for the next five years, and well, honestly, like, the people... They're good at it. Go pursue it. Like, if they will hire you, like, of course, it's a job like anything else. But I think people don't realize the opportunities they have after college. If they just, like, widen their scope a lot. Well, most people uh, that are good at sales, like, you can do that right now. Most if you, if you can walk into an interview, you can get hired for a sales company, and you walk into the interview and you're personable, uh, they'll probably hire you because sales people want – Finding great salespeople is very hard because most people aren't good at sales. But when you graduate from college, the thing is, like, you got to hit such a big niche of, like, got to be such an, like, an incredible student academically, resume, have such good connections to get some of these, like, incredible high-paying jobs that most people strive for and everyone thinks they're going to get. But most people don't know what they want to do and they don't know what to apply. So they're just, like this is a company and then I'll get to stay in my area or like, it's like a lot of people who graduate and then they want to become teachers. Right. That, that seems like a very like common, like, Oh, I have my degree, but actually I think I want to be a teacher. And then you just want to do more school because you don't, some people just do more school, not because they want to, because they don't know what they want to do in the workforce. So they're like, well, I'm, I'm good at school. Like there are people that just are professional students for like life. But it's also like the, the, what used to be a high school diploma is now like a, a bachelor degree. Like you, it's not just you can't only survive on a bachelor either. Like, well, if you want to really go somewhere, you need usually a master's to get like that high paying raw job. Like I'm, like my the first thing my dad told me is like you're not moving back and I'm starting to work before you have a master's. Like you need a master's degree uh, to get anywhere in this country. Uh, like that being Norway, but I think also I think the most quality people. It's always at the top of the, um, like the, 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 the CEO. Yeah. yeah. Like, and it's not because like you're smart. I'm not, I'm not making that, that argument that you're smart because you have an extra degree. It's just, it's just a w- easier way for a company or someone. Lawyers, someone's like they will look there first. That's just like, so I, I don't know. I, I feel like people here, they're like, they're saying, Oh, I'm so done with college. I'm so done with studying, studying, like, like, dude, so you're saying you're so done and just ready to work for your next, what, 60 years of your life until you retire? Like, <laughs> like obviously, if you want to get somewhere, you got to learn. Like, life is about learning. So, like, once you stop doing that, okay, yeah, I can understand. Like, if you're not going to study anymore or if you're not going to do something that will give you experience other than working, then you're going to have a really shitty life. Well, that's the thing, too, right? So, but as we were talking... And most of us now on this podcast, we're all we're all talking about how we don't think college is 
very beneficial. It's more bullshitting, right? It's like the actual academics of the school are not the skills that you are translating to the workforce, right? So like, how is anything you'd learn in any of your classes if you're a communications major or communications that involves speaking, but so you're a business major and you're doing sales, you're not really doing business. No. It, most, like most, uh, American college business is very, when you study that, it's very directed towards corporate, like working at corporate. Yeah. Like you can obviously study um, entrepreneurship or small business management, but like most of the general classes for business, for school of business, especially this school is very directed towards doing a cor corporate job like sales. It's kind of like you see that at the school, they will mostly direct their students towards one type of profession and it happens to be a close a, a sponsor of snoo that is a sales company yeah it's just like yeah well that's like how most colleges like there's you know some schools are better at for business they have a great business program they have a great engineering program but like not every program at their school they'll offer all the programs because they want as many students as they want but their programs aren't necessarily catered towards that where most of these business colleges are catered towards sales because that's what most starting like it's funny we were talking yesterday so snoo does offer a program you got the green three so you get to graduate in three years right and then like most kids end up coming for that they're like yeah i don't want to be in college for three years and then they're like having so much fun that they're like i want to be here for more than three years but then the funny part is like they end up going to the four-year program and then literally you get to your third year and you're like what am I doing with my life? Why am I still here? Why am I? St I don't want to be in more debt. And then it's like yesterday we were having a conversation with someone and they were saying how th they're about to graduate in three years, but they want to do, they're not, they're not ready to leave college. They're not ready to, the thing about leaving college is it's not that they're scared of leaving college. They're scared of being an adult and yeah, like yeah. having to pay. Being out in that uh, uncomfortable spot, like not in the comfort zone of your own. College you don't get to go to you don't get to go to class that you set for your eleven. You don't get your two days off because you set a schedule where you have three days and then two days off, and you can't just wake up hungover on the weekends and be like, oh yeah, oh wait, I have to like pay bills. I can't just like sit around and play Xbox and get high. Now that is fun for a little bit. I feel like it, it's like if you don't get that life of like just kind of relaxing for a little bit, you're yeah. you'd go crazy. Well, I mean, some people love the hard work, and if you love hard work, you're going to be successful regardless because you're. I think hard. I think the 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 thing you're saying here, like when you like, it's always about the depth, and I understand that because like that's what you worry about because you work as a system puts you in a lot of depth, um, and that's like I think that's kind of what for many is ruining kind of the fun, like. They're going to go party, they're going to go have their fun, but they always have this depth to think about in the back of their head. And I can understand that that's something that makes people want to leave college. But I would say it's it depends on people's experience because, as we all know, a lot of people have different experience of the college based on your social cues and like who you decide to uh, hang with or be with. I bet if I haven't joined... Uh, our fraternity, like my college experience, would have been party, 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 but in a different way. Okay, we had this conversation on some of the other episodes where we're talking about how a fraternity is great because you get to it's like it's like you're in high school, right? In like a sense where you know so many more people at a party. There's it's like, but most college kids that aren't in organizations, they go to a party with their friends. It's like four of them, and you're in a party with you don't know anyone. It's like being at the bar almost. They're just like you're with your group, and then you're there's a bunch of people around, but like you're not really even trying to socialize with those people unless you're like trying to hook up or do like you're not like going to like a if you're four people, you're not really going out to meet friends you're not gonna yeah. be like hey i'm so and so it's like like most people don't even make friends in their college classes let alone like again people don't talk anymore so it's very tough to, like making friends people like want to make friends but at the same time we don't want to make friends if that makes but sense. that's like one thing that i feel even more for americans that college teaches you uh especially if you're a small town place you learn to socialize in a new way that you didn't know in high school because high school is where you're you're in the same small town with the same people. Like I lived in a, like I live in the capital of Norway. It's like almost a million people there. So like when I went to high school, I knew people at multiple high schools. But I see here how people coming from a small place and they get to college and they have to like rethink how to socialize with people. And that's like I would say it's an important skill. Um, 
but I'd say that most people, they end up just kind of sticking with the, like, it's like your first friend is like your college roommate, right? Like, yeah, if, yeah. if you're not lucky, like me, when I come in, like I came in, my college roommate was one of my best friends and me and Dan are both very social. So it wasn't really hard for us to make no. friends, but people come in and they want to be friends with their, like they want a friend. So they're friends with their college roommate. And then like, you don't may not even like necessarily like them. There are horror stories about people's college roommates being crazy. Yeah. Like, so like you end up playing, I was probably the crazy one. <laughs> <laughs> and then you end up coming in, like looking to make friends. So then you just kind of will stick to the first group. Sometimes people don't expand. They, they, they can't admit that their group of friends kind of sucks. So they end up just sticking with this group that they're there for four years. And then they're like, they shit. Don't, they don't evolve. They don't go to the next level. Yeah. It sucks. And it's tough. Again, that is very hard to learn that skill because it's so much easier to just be like, well, I have some friends that I can get food with. Like the difference too between a big school and a small school, like here, like you're in a, you're in a, we're in like a fraternity. You have like a group chat where you can just like, Hey, I'm going to the dining hall. Who wants to get food? And you'll get a bunch of responses. When you go to a big school, like university of Arkansas or UMass Amherst, where there's 25,000 students, like you send out, like you're kind of doing most of those kids there by themselves. When you're like at the dining hall, when you're eating, when you're like going to class, like it's very like, lonely experience when you're not hanging out with your friends mm -hmm. well some people like thrive in that experience i think the best thing you can do is have some time by yourself like go like going to college without friends like that you know from home is almost better like your experience but it's different too between like um the foreign exchange students that i've met because like you guys are all friends with the foreign exchange students yeah we're a little like a little you're a nice little click like, like you're like oh we're oh you're you're from a different country i'm from a yeah, different yeah. country but that's like that's you say the first first group like obviously i was with a big group of international kids my first couple of weeks here uh i had an orientation with them i had to do all this stuff with them and it kind of made sense at that time but I I had a very like strong thing that I wasn't gonna go to college, and not get a lot of American friends. That was my solely goal. Like I have to socialize with people from another culture than me. Like American Norwegian culture is pretty similar, but it's very different at the same time. And especially in that where you go into college. So that was my first instinct, and I happened to live by a bunch of. Americans in the fraternity and I didn't even know I was joining a fraternity. I was just I was walking in I was just hanging out one night and then boom here we are. It's like do you like to party and drink and fuck girls? Dude, no way <laughs> me too man. That's sick. It wasn't, it wasn't really about that. It was more of just like I just found like a, a, a group I was yeah, I was comfortable around them, but it wasn't only like four guys. It was four guys and 26 others and that was what's so great about it because like yeah, no, it's, it was it was weird. I remember kind of like this change where I, I said this wasn't going to happen, but like I kind of switched from just hanging out with the international kids just to only hanging out with almost the Americans, but it was, it just felt natural. Well, yeah, it's, that's but like when you, it's kind of like not everyone can be your friend. You can't force like you can't force a relationship if it's not going to work out. You can't force friends yeah. like your friends that you become friends with. You're friends with because it's just like we can sit here and have a conversation and it's like it just. It just it's it's an instinct almost like yeah. it's. But you also see the change in people once they get solely American friends. We have another foreign brother from <laughs> Turkey. Shout out to uh, Ali Galip Matlar, uh, the other guy that understands how how alienated you can feel sometimes. No, but like he said it himself, I I like I I need Amer oh, to hang out with Americans because I get need to get better English. So for his his goal coming to America was to get a master's degree and get better at English because you need English in the global perspective if you're going to get international jobs. And he said by the time he's been with us for or like been in our fraternity for about half a year now or now it's almost a year, his English has gotten so much better. And that's like you see the people who barely hang out with Americans, their accent will still be so different. Like it will be so clear that they're foreign people. I, I get it sometimes that my, I have an accent, but sometimes I definitely don't have an accent and people don't even notice it. Like they, they don't think I'm foreign until I say my W's or V's. <laughs> well, they see those pearly blue eyes yeah. and then that, that sweet blonde hair and they're like, okay, this guy's probably not from America, but no. 
Yeah, um, this the thing. So one of my friends at uh, Amherst, he dates a girl that is a foreign exchange student from Japan, and uh, the more we've got to know them, know them, they have been telling us how, like, again, most of them aren't don't have American friends. Like most of the like, most of those people that come, like the like big Chinese and Japanese populations of exchange students, they just kind of stick to each other and they never expand. They don't really get to have a, like an American college experience because they're around people that don't like speak English, they just get to speak their, like, and I understand that, like, it is nice that you probably have Ali and that you can, like, and that you have exchange students because no one else gets, like, and some people get homesick when they're literally 30 minutes from home at college. Like, you're halfway, like, across the like world. 4,500 miles. Yeah, no, it's, um, it, it's, it's funny to think about, like, how bad people can be in English and still <laughs> go to college in America. And it's, like, like, it's one of my big things. I think that's, if you're, if you're going to study abroad, um, study abroad every semester. Yeah, exactly. No, no, but like, <laughs> study abroad. If you're going to study abroad, you're going to see a different culture. But how can you experience that culture, that is American culture, if you don't partake in it? If your your difference is you're buying different food and you have to talk to a cashier in a different language, then you're not really getting uh, the full experience, and you're kind of losing out. And I say, people that decide to come to college in another country and don't partake in the culture and just like kind of group get in the group and alienate yourself from it and i would say that that's makes the whole state abroad like pointless well it's like it's like you're studying america in your group of friends you're like a fly on a wall yeah you don't really you don't really go there you're just like looking at people from outside perspective, not understanding why Americans like it, like I get it after a while, like understanding it, why Americans are like how they are, how they are, like what makes them together. But I think people that definitely don't want to partake in that social aspect of college, they will never understand. No. And uh, it's like, obviously you are social, but, and you were probably this way in Norway, but what's one thing you'd say that like you think Americans do that is stupid? Like what's something that you came here and you're like, why, why is everyone doing this? What, like something we do, something we say, the way we act about certain things. Is there anything that you're like, wow. I would say a lot of people are fake nice. It's common courtesy to always say, hi, how are you doing? I come from a country where people look down and they say, hi, but like if they, know someone but if they know someone really well they stop for talk but like it's like here it's always like hi how are you and i was like like i don't want to take the time to say i'm good how about you like i just that's one of the things i think here like people are overly nice they don't need to be nice to everyone because everyone knows it's kind of fake it's like the thing that like as you get older you realize like it's like, you know, like in high school, in like high school and elementary school, it's like, yeah, everyone's your friend. Be nice to everyone. And it's like, you can be nice to someone without having to be like, hi, like you don't need to pretend to be like nice to someone. But like, that is like part of our culture. It's like, it's like the man, it's kind of like when you work in like a food industry or like at like a could like Best Buy or something, right? You got to, the customer is always yeah. right. It's like, you got to be nice to them. Like yeah, they let yeah. them do what they want and just have this fake kindness. And that ends up going to the way our culture acts in like social settings where it's like, Hey, it's like, if I'm at a party and I don't know you, like, and I don't want to talk to you, like, I'm not going to sit there and be like, I'm going to have a sit here and have a conversation with this person sitting next to me just because we're at the same place. It's like, no, we can be at the same place and not want to talk. Yeah. Is that something that happens in Norway? Like you're more like with your group and you don't really want to sit there and talk to people that you don't know. No, I would definitely say depends on your friend group. But I would say when you go out to the club, you go out to meet people. Like we went out yesterday yeah. and we solely talked to each other. Like we ran into people we know, but it was mostly like, we didn't like really go out to meet people. We're an exp yeah, we don't want to do so that that's that's the thing about our culture too, right? Like you make your friends and then go out. Where it's almost in your Norway it's it seems like you go out to make more friends. Go out to meet people, talk to people. But I think that's a maturity thing too though. I think that changes just because our college experience is so different where people kinda have to become adults when they start college. Like they move out, um, they feed themselves and then it's like they have classes and they go out like in the weekends because they go to bars, they don't go to home parties or 
uh, fraternity houses. Yeah, it's like you're a little bit older too than most of the college students like yeah. coming in. So would you say that like most of us are, especially like the freshman here, like how immature most of these people coming into college are? Is it like ve- it's very noticeable? I imagine to you sometimes. I feel like I feel like that. I feel like be that that yeah. just like. Or the guy that's pretty much been dating someone his whole life and just became single like that guy. Just, like, don't know to take people serious enough sometimes. I mean, there are mature people, but especially, like... Few and far between. Especially from a freshman I met. It's like they they just have gotten this, like, taste of ecstasy and ecstasy being in college. And they just absolutely freaking love it and go fucking ham for a year. If they don't die in the first year, because <laughs> it's like transported first nah, night. Yeah, no, it's it's. I wouldn't say people are more uh, immature here. I would say people are just younger. Like, yeah, like people go to college right away. Like I took a gap year, and I'm very happy for it. I'm also very happy to be a little older sometimes because I know how to handle things and how to not make. If I'm having like if I'm fucking hangover, like I know how to handle it. And I know like exactly what I gotta do because I had that experience from just being uh, adult in my own country. And but yeah, no, definitely feel like a dad. It's <laughs> it's funny. It's like when like an eighteen year old gets to college and they get drunk for the first time. And they wake up the next day they're like, "I'm dying, I'm dying." Yeah. It's like, no man, it's gonna be fine. Or like the first time you like break up with someone, or the first time you like someone like you're in a relationship and someone like you're like Snapchatting and they ghost you or something. You're like yeah. it's the end of the world. Whereas like I feel like. Our country matures, like, we have this prolonging of, like, young adults thing with college, right? Like, you don't have to mature. You get four more years to, like, not have to do anything. Your mom and dad can still pay for your college. You're still, like, foods given to you from dining halls and stuff. It's like, you don't have to learn to be your own person. So no, you, you, you're still kind of living at home, but just away. It's like you're taking a semester abroad, essentially just abroad from your home, but in the same, like, same country. And that's like, but you know, you have that comforting thing. There's no like, okay, like a lot of students get a job, but it's not like when they pay for their housing, they pay in one bulk. And then it's like, okay, I don't have to worry for housing for a year. But when you don't live at campus or live at home, or like live, live, like it's your own home, then you pay every month and it just becomes more real. Like it's the things you need, the things you should learn in high school, like you, you understand them that, like how to, um, budget money they don't teach us that in high school no they don't and it's kind of fun (laughs) but i feel like that's also a lot of life experience though well i think the thing is the best way to prepare someone for life is one to let them discover life on their own but also you've got to put them in a position where they can succeed too right by not teaching someone someone and releasing them in the wild like that that's like that's like a very tough way to learn things and yes some people can overcome that but most of us i feel like aren't as tough as we'd like to say. And, like, the minute yeah. we hit trouble, like, most of people will break down and yeah. be terrified. It's, again, it happens to everyone that graduates their senior year of college and they look at all this debt that was monopoly money and then they're like, wait, I have to pay this back? And that goes yeah. back to the going into, like, I'll take whatever job I can get. I'll yeah. do anything to pay off this money. Because you have would, six months after you graduate before your debt kicks like, in. Like, the, the question, like, you asked, is, like, college worth it? Is it worth paying all this money? Like... I would say there's a college person and there's not a college person. If you're not a college person, then no. Like, like make using all this money on education, it's not worth it for you because like it's you're just gonna know what you're gonna take from it. What do, what what am I like when I'm going to college? What is my experience? What is gonna be my experience? And like I came here with a mindset that at first it was gonna be very serious. I was just gonna contact network a lot like mostly like trying to get a job right away but it changed slowly to becoming like okay i'm in this other country far away from home like there's no repercussion of anything i do other than maybe getting deported i'm just gonna live in the moment and say like okay whenever i go back to norway that's when i started (laughs) taking taking things serious and again and yeah i think i think that also shaped my experience and i'm kind of happy it did because Seeing how unserious college can be, it's like if I came here, if I paid knowingly when I started paying for school, this school, knew that this was what I was paying for, I probably would not have come to this school, like academic wise. Like it's, it's sad to say, but yeah. 
There's a lot of good. Te- uh, there's a lot of good teachers here, but it's like um, we all like to. You know, when you go to school, like like snow, and you want to think that it's you know, it's just like. People like to say degree doesn't matter, right? It's, it's, it's information you learn. But then you get to the school and you're like, it's such a joke. It's like, yeah, it doesn't matter because dumb people will still graduate here. Smart people will still graduate here. But that's the problem. It's like it almost makes the smart people not as intelligent because they can be like, well, I know this person that went to SNU and they literally can't count the 10. And no. it's like, but no, I can't count the 10. It's like, like the roof is yeah. so low. There's like, like if you go to Harvard there's expectancy that everyone there is smart and the roof for what you can achieve is very high. But I feel like the, the, the average of people here kind of drags it down. And it's like, I can walk into my English 200 class and find out during, or like when I sit down that I have a persuasive speech I'm about to make in five minutes. And I can go on my phone and find an article in the region and talk about that and just say a yes or no, like you should do this or not and get an A on it. It's like, like, how do you even do that? Like should not, the teacher should know you're bullshitting then. And it was like, very good speech. (laughs) Holy shit. Like this is, this is college. This is college for me. Just like half-assing everything and being good at it. College. That's making people say. think that you're smart because, <laughs> like, to be honest, I'm one of the dumbest people I know. Like, it's back home. Like, I, I know I'm the smart there too, but it's for uh, very different reasons. So yeah, I think it's 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 wild to think about like how this school is compared to others. And I like I, I don't know because I haven't gone to another college. It's probably why I should <laughs> go to another college when I graduate. Uh, yeah, again, that's the thing. That's why like, I like my experience of being at all these different colleges. Mm-hmm. Um, I've seen colleges the same no matter where you go, right? Like, I actually like the small community a lot bigger, a lot bigger, a lot better than the bigger schools because you get, like, a sense of, like, friendships a lot a lot more powerful just because, like, you can hang out with your friends. It's, like, it's really nice. But the thing is, again, the people... Again, but when you so big schools still have dumb people too, right? It's just like they're like not letting in as many. Where when it's a smaller community, it's very obvious the type of students that they're letting in. Like, and if you're the thing is too, right? If you are the greatest student that you can get into Harvard and you come to SNU, SNU will pretty much let you come here for free. But you're not going to come here, right? So like, if you're very talented, you're not going to come here unless it's like very convenient for you unless you really want to come here whereas at the bigger schools like people will travel from all around the country to come to harvard if you because that's like harvard is a school and like growing up in massachusetts you almost didn't even realize how like good the college is there we have mit harvard some um, of the top colleges in the world yeah and it's like people like you know about harvard in norway right like harvard's like very well known it's southern new hampshire is an online school and it's like I don't even know how you were like, that's, that's always a funny thing. Like, how did you end up coming here? It's actually my first, uh, college party. It was a hard party. Wow. Uh, I get, I get to, uh, Boston late on a Thursday night back in two years ago in August. And I, it's fucking humid. I'm sweating ball sack. I'm in this like ratchet ass neighborhood up in, I think it's called Somersville. Somerville. Yeah. Somerville. And I'm like going out to get food. It's back home. It's like, four in the morning and I go into this na- like this long street in this neighborhood and there's a Mexican restaurant there I'm like okay well makes sense that I go to the US and try Mexican food first <laughs> like yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I sit down and this guy looks at me and he's just like he just looks at his other and he says something and I just bring go and I'm like okay I gotta get out of here <laughs> and I get back to my, uh, go get my uh, Airbnb and there's this Danish guy there also named Jasper <laughs> And he studies actually at MIT. Uh, he was one of those kids that like who expect international to be kids to be just coming abroad and just like fucking geniuses. Like, this kid made me feel dumb. <laughs> and he's like, "Yo, so like, so nice to meet you, but like, I'm going to this uh, party over at Cam- because it was like right by Cam- Cambridge. So I'm going to this uh, party over at the ca- campus of Harvard. Like, do you want to come? I'm like." Fuck yeah, like, I mean, I just landed in the US. I was so tired that I just needed this to happen. It was like, okay, I've been to one college party and our American college and it's a Harvard party. And that was, that was a weird, weird party. Like, 
that's everything I think you would expect of international students being as international as you can. <laughs> that's the most foreign party. Like, and I'm foreign. Like, that, I felt foreign. You felt foreign. It was people from all over the world, and they were all, like, wicked smart, probably millionaires, like some cryptocurrencies or some oil shikes, like, out somewhere. And it's, it was just, like, thinking back at it, it was just so surreal. It was like, um, would you say that the like it's too what you learn like being like a business major, being around business kids, like you know business people. It's like work hard, play hard. That's kind of their mentality. It's like the Wall Street, like let's get as much money as we can and then let's go blow it on like hookers and cocaine. <laughs> Whereas like then like when I hang around theater students, when I was doing like the acting, it's like their vibe is more like they're more like theater people are more like business kids we don't really like to talk about our emotions we don't really like to talk about like it's like you know just like the more macho mentality yeah. whereas like the artsy people it's like you know each other but they don't really really know each other yeah well because they like in the, most of the business people they don't really even want to know each other it's like yo tell me what you're doing like what, what are you doing business-wise what's your internship whereas like theater people one you're doing acting which is displaying emotions so you got to be like you're almost more emotion like um, willing to talk about your feelings and like their parties are so much different because like they're more into having fun like just like enjoying the vibe whereas like business kids is kind of like how much beer can i pound in this one sitting how much like well, let's do some pre-workout like last night it's like <laughs> let's take some pre-workout and put in a bud light and shotgun it like that's uh really not what they're doing and like and then like the most and like those that intelligent like Harvard party, right? With all those like smart people, were they like doing like college like frat bro stuff, or they do more like let's sit here and like drink some wine and have intellectual Definitely conversations? Definitely the latter. It was uh, it was very like like when I see college movies back home and I see the kind where it's it's probably like an old movie and everyone is like sitting there with a glass of wine, very cultured, very entitled. Uh, and yeah, no, definitely not. Like I, I thought if I, I think I thought college was going to be like that because I went to that one so party terrified. and then I come to like my first college party and yeah, snoo, snoozoo, snoozoo. Yeah. I think it was like in, in a townhouse and it was steamy, <laughs> smelled really bad, but it was, it was a good time. It was a good time. It's packed. It's like, yeah. like I'm, I'm crushed against the wall, but there's like, this like hot seven looking at you and it's like yo it's like i'm jesper i'm from norway and they're like what is that accent like, yeah <laughs> well everyone thought it was russian like okay. a couple first times and i don't really understand why but it was just like yeah like i would guess every other country except russia when you come to blonde hair but mm, I, like hitler would have liked you right you're the perfect race <laughs> sadly <laughs> probably would but still um and then so going off that though uh so the snoop parties are obviously a lot different um but would you say that now that you have like you don't regret coming here because you have learned a lot but would you have done it differently going back would you like if you stayed in norway per se and you didn't come to america what would you have ended up doing instead i think i probably would have I, th I would have my degree by now i would have probably been in some I wouldn't say nine to five job, but some job somewhere. Um, and I think the U.S. has still made me realize that I, if I want to, I can become the ultimate version of myself. I think I achieved that by the time being here. And it's not that like like the U.S. has better me or worse me. It's just made me realize a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And I think if I hadn't gone to the U.S., I probably would have still like try to figure that out. I probably would have been uh, more uh, adult and probably more in a more routine, but than I am now. But still, I think I was still would have like had that in the back of my mind, trying to figure out like who am I, like what am I doing here? Yeah, and what would you be like going on that point? Uh, what would you say that you did discover? Like, what was something you didn't think of yourself? in norway that like america college was it more to say america was it more the fraternity was it more the classes is the more realizing how much people in america are dumb and you're smarter than them or like what, what would you say like the, the biggest thing you did learn i think how to cheat the system as much as you can <laughs> i think that's the one thing i learned and like i was never bad at school i was lazy and i was also sick like during high school so i had some reasons for not uh perform. I always felt like I was underachieving. But here I'm not like thinking I'm achieving more, but it's just I know how to push the limits 
and but tell- get the same results with doing half of what I used to do. And that is a very, very good feeling. And I, I know, like, it's not something I can use forever. Like, that has to stop at some point, because or else it's going to affect me later on in life. But as of right now, just, like, understanding how to make the system work in favor of you in pretty much every situation. It's not work harder, it's work smarter, is what they like exactly. to say. Exactly, yeah. But I also think the problem is too, right, that college does, if like, I feel like the most intelligent students that aren't, like if you're gonna be a doctor or an engineer, like, like most engineers, they'll, like they'll, if you have friends with any engineers, they'll always talk about how they have so much homework and it's so hard. And it's like, they literally, they're doing these get degrees because they're, that's so hard. It's where like people I know in master programs that are going to be doctors, if you get below a B, you fail. Yeah. But then that makes sense because I don't want doctors that are getting Bs because I want doctors to know how to save it's my funny. life. Everyone else at home, they hear my my grades. Like I would say I'm at a, like B plus something or B plus like 3.4 or something now. And they hear that at home. Out of four, like, oh, wow, that's really, that's really good. Like, you're doing so good in college. I'm you're like, so smart. no, I'm not. Like, getting an A should be, like, the bare minimum for me. Like, I know I can get one easily, but it's just, like, in a home, you have a system where people get these. Like, they just want to finish college with a couple of A's, a couple of B's and C's, but they just want to pass every class because it's so hard. Like, if you... If you do like put in the the work ethic you put in there or here, I'd say over based over time, like it would be like they would probably be smarter or probably cheat more. But yeah, no, I don't mind coming home and having that like people think <laughs> I actually did something over here because that's also part of the plan. Like I have to make it make it seem like I came over to the US and I achieved a lot more than I did. And that's I feel like that's the American dream right there, right? Mm-hmm. It's proving that <laughs> with it how much does the world think I actually do when in reality I do not much at all? And that's, and that's uh, the funny thing that you learn is like college is more of a scam for scamming the system than it is for you actually growing and maturing. It's learning that, oh, wait, maybe life isn't as complicated as they make it out to be. Like maybe it's not as hard as I thought it was. But also that's a lot. That's the problem with our culture because our culture in America is based off culture's like we're a melting pot where people from yeah. all over the world. Sure. Whereas like in other countries, it's like, like our pride, it's weird, right? Like your country, like pride in Norway, it's like everyone on the Norwegian team is Nor like Nor like Norwegian. They're like white. Most- I would say not necessarily anymore. Like it's changing a lot. Like our best player, um, he has, I think, I don't know exactly where his family is from, but he's definitely not like, He's not a first gen, or he's not a second or third generation Norwegian. Like he comes, like his family comes from another place, and <laughs> in Norway, it's still maybe like that culture because we're such a small country, and we recently got very rich. Like Norway was not a popular country to come to if you're an immigrant. Now it is, but it's still like refugees will rather seek to other countries because now our country has. Like every the living expenses are so high. Like I think I saw that a beer by euro, let's say like yeah, okay, let's say a dollar dollar for a pint, which is half like half a liter of tall boy of uh, beer, cost like three dollars, and in other cities uh, or in other countries they cost like one or half a dollar. And like, dude, if you're coming to a country as a refugee, like. Just knowing that everything here, like if I don't get work right away, everything here is going to be shit expensive. Like, why would you want to go there? But yeah, no, I definitely think U.S. is a melting pot. But I think everyone that comes to the U.S. and gets affected by the culture, they like, uh, let's say like American culture is now a piece of me. I have a little piece of American culture in me when I go back home. And that's, would you say that's a good thing? Yeah. Because like, it's all about like seeing things from different perspectives. Understanding how the world works, but not based on coming from one place and being from that place. Yeah, you gotta be uh, biased. You gotta actually see what, like, you gotta look at it from the like the wide, the broad perspective rather than just your narrow, like, this seeing, is like what. seeing American culture and going to college and uh, versus how I saw like before I got go there or like came here. It's it's very different, and it helps in a lot of situations in life to see things from two different perspectives. 
Yes, that's why. Like, I feel like I have such a wide ex- like experience of college, just being at all the different ones and realizing because a lot like you, right? You haven't been to another college, so you they're like, wow, how different is it? And it's like it's really not that different. It's not really like you just the people you would have been around. I think you're able to be part of a fraternity at this school and like not have to work as hard has almost made your college experience a lot more beneficial because you just got to experience so much more that a lot of foreign exchange students don't really get to. And you're like a leader in like the organizations here. Like you have a like a voice, whereas most people in like bigger schools, it's like you like you could end up just being the foreign kid that everyone likes. Like, hey, you're foreign. Like, hey, like, and I'm sure some of your friends like they get that experience of being like, yeah, the people like them, but they're just the foreign guy where it's like you are jasper to us like yeah. it's a, like you being from norway has no effect on why we like you it's like we like you for the person you are no it's it's funny going from being that foreign guy to just being a guy yeah like obviously i get the comments to new people i meet but it's still like now it's it's just like it's almost kind of sad because you get half the attention of what you used to like i feel like wherever i walk my first couple of weeks here it's new like it was like being monitored like like, whoever I slept with, whatever I did, like, people would know in instance, and that's, like, crazy to think about, like, at home, like, people don't give a fuck about what you do, but here it's like, okay, that kid is different, so we gotta make sure we know, like, what's, what's happening with him. Is that the same, would you say, like, if, like, an American or any other country comes to, like, Norway, is it, that, would you treat them the same way as we treat, like, foreigners? Like, are you, like, like, or do you not care? It's like, that you just view them, like, does America do a thing where we view, like, people from different countries and foreigners, like, in such a high esteem, almost? Like, because no. it's like, you're different. I think, I think we, I think we would do the same thing where, okay, you come from another country, you came all this way, like, wow, that's in self, just to think about, like, you packed up and moved to another country, that's, it's like almost like you get the credit before you even been to the country. Yeah. Like you, you're just there. And I think a lot of people just think that it's impressive in itself. Like, uh, it's when, like, oh, we, when I get Americans over, like I met, met a couple of Americans did during my time and not saying that I like, didn't think that America was smart, but like, I definitely think that just did just the being there made them smarter. And I think that's about all about getting the experience from other countries. Yeah, because I'm most of the people that I know in, the, in college have done study abroad, um, in like Italy mostly, or I think that, that's a good point. Like people that comes from back from study abroad, they have a very different mindset to college than before they left. Like they left ready to see the world, and they come back, and they're just like I notice it. They're just different, and I think it's a good thing. I think my friends have seen it too back home. Like whenever I come home, I become very different. Like I'm not the same person. I was when I left two years ago. And that's obviously what the point of life is, is yeah. growing up. But growing, like, changing. But what would you say is different, though, about you? Just, like, were you more, like, secluded, thinking you're, like, more, like, pride in, like, Norway, thinking you're the best? I, I feel, or does Norway not really have, like, obviously everyone has nationalism, like, you think your country is awesome but like america we literally think we're number one and would you say that after being here are we the best country in the world <sighs> not to put you on the spot like that no but. no i think america has a lot of good things going for them and uh, i like obviously to point out what's everything's wrong like what's wrong and everyone needs to know but that's i think that's also because you guys have that mindset that america is number one so i love like picking on it yeah uh, i would say norway we like we every, every country i feel like loves the country they love like bragging about it yeah and that's that's just nationalism that's like a fundamental thing of culture like you, you have, should like your country. You, you should have loyalty to this one place well, and uh, you want to like tell how good it is because it's your childhood memories you growing up like everything you know that safe and comforting comes from that place. So yeah, I would say Norwegians are like that, but not in the same way because America in itself is such a huge country. It's like it's fifty states that, like Massachusetts, is pretty much a state size the state of um, Norway. Like they have the same size. That's crazy. It's, it's like five million people versus like five point six million people. And then and, yeah. yeah, like it, it can you can say you can, like comparing. Uh, America is like comparing like six countries in Europe. Like you can put fifty-one uh, Norways in America and have it be the same size. That's that's wild to yeah. think about. To like think. so, it's kind of hard to do that comparison. But I would say it's, it has a lot of good things going for it. 
Uh, don't need to get all political, but yeah, no, I think you guys, I like to say that American politics is by far the most entertaining thing. Well, the idea that we make fun of our president of the United States, right? That in Norway, they would, that would be like, there'd be blasphemy. If like, you were like saying, do you have a president or a prime minister? Like, what they are you, prime minister. Yeah, you're prime So if they were on TV saying your prime minister, like, is fake news and he's grabbing girls in pussy like yeah that would that would never happen like uh, it would just not have gone through like it's i just think being like when you're a prime minister it's it's different than being a president also because you guys have like when when we think about norwegian government like you think of the whole government but when you think about american government you think of POTUS, president of the united states it's just like this one guy at the top that everyone looks to. Yeah. In Norway, it's like you look to a party of the the political party. So, like, I think we have we joke about our president uh, a lot, but it's just not in the same way. And our president, our prime minister, is also hold to a higher standard. Does but, he have more power? Like, it's he. And, but like the thing about they like the idea of the president is like he's the leader of the free world and like he has all this power. But in reality, he needs to get Congress to pass. Like he really can't do as much as you like think he can. Is the prime minister that way? Is he like no? He, yeah, the prime minister. She is just she's like almost like a placeholder. Like she makes decisions, uh, but she doesn't do. It's not like she doesn't have sole power. For a more, like about anything, but that's what I don't think. That's like a dictator. That we definitely yeah. don't want that in any country. But no, uh, I think that our country does a good job of like. Well, the problem is now with this whole like refugee thing, but but the, like degrees wise, I think our country does a good job of allowing all your countries to come here and just like get the experience American college. Because and then I think it's awesome that we do the study abroad and we get to see different cultures. But I think. The problem would not, I don't think it's a problem, but I still think like we leave this country and it's like a vacation almost. Like, do you view this more as a growing experience or a vacation? Definitely a vacation. I yeah. say that to uh, a lot of my American friends that are like, I can't wait to get back on vacation. And it's like, <laughs> yes, it's a stressful period with school and everything. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm here for two years, I'm doing like 10 classes a semester. It's, it can get stressful, but ultimately, yes, I view it as a vacation. And I think that's like sort of what it should be for a lot of people. You shouldn't, you should go to college and be happy you're back and like kind of unwind and think like, okay, classes are stressful, but it's because we make it stressful. We make it hard for ourselves by procrastinating. But I think, I think it's important, been important for me to not think that like everything I do here is a, like on my work. No, I'm at a vacation because it's like. It, don't let this define Jesper who he is because he got an A in public speaking class where he just would do the assignment five minutes before right this is like there's not really nothing serious to take about it it's like you're here getting drunk partying like having a good time really not working that hard wise but like you're still learning that this is all still beneficial stuff and oh, you're yeah, learning yeah, definitely. especially now in a business sense where you go like you can go work for a con like an international <laughs> company and, and like understand how to talk is there a different way that like you guys, like, we talked about, like, how we're, like, Americans, sometimes we have a lot of fake niceness. But is there a way in making friends that's different here than in Norway? Or is it this no, pretty say, universal? I'd say that's pretty universal. Um, it's, like, I wouldn't say I started. I had just been myself whenever I tried to get new friends here. And it's, it's kind of the way I've still been at home. I would say... Um, you, it's easier to kind of spot the people you're going to be around like a lot sooner. Like you back home than here. Here it's very, like it's kind of hit or miss, but you kind of go for it. Like you notice a lot of thing, people you think you were friends, like you aren't really friends with them. Um, and I just think like in Norway, it's more about having a broader mindset, like a broader perspective. Like people think they go come to college and the first people... She said, like, the first people you meet, you have to be friends with them for a long time. Like, these are, like, you, you like, you're connected to them now. But here it's very easy for me to be noticing right, like, almost, like, right away uh, who I'm going to like or not, which I previously didn't know. Like, in the start, it was a lot of hit and miss. Now it's, like, I learned how to adapt to that. Would you say that, um, like, that on your point that, like, you know, there are a lot of people you're friends with that you're not really friends with, is that the case in Norway, like, is, or is, like, your friends are your, like, in America, we are friends with so many people just 
to fit like an they they give me something like I have my yeah. friends I want to go drink with whereas yeah. like my my real friends I can do any activity with and they're my friends there are some people that like you're friends with that you don't want to do like all activities with right or is it's it like back in Norway uh, I would say like I have obviously the older you get the more close friend group do you get like there's new additions all the time but I would say my friend group has narrowed down a lot since uh, high school and I think like a lot of similarities being between college and high school is that you don't see, understand the bigger picture and see what's coming after until you're done with it. Yeah. Like people do a whole lot of realization when they go out of college. They're like, holy shit. Like these are all the things I should have known in college, but I do now. And that makes you not like, it's not that important to have that big of a friend group because like you're, you're kind of like, you're more set with where you're at. Yeah. You're kind of in this zone. You're comfortable with where you're at. You don't want, like, the idea of having all these fake friends that, yeah. like, you don't want... Like, it's what, like Instagram what? followers. Like, yeah. You don't really care about it, but everyone else says you should care about it, so you care. Like, you have to have a lot of followers. I think, like, we grew up not even thinking about all these things. Like, social media was so new to us. It's like, uh, we all grew up, like, social media was hitting, like, oh, I want all these followers. And, like, at first you didn't even, like, care about them. You were just like, oh, like, I remember the first time... Uh, I got a Twitter. One of my friends, he made it for me. And I was like, oh, this is cool. Like, you can tweet out stuff or whatever. And then, like, now it's, like, your Instagram, your Twitter, your Facebook friends. Not really Facebook in our age, but... Yeah, but it's, it's, like weird. The it's, five it's weird to think about how Facebook just, like, we outgrown Facebook. Yeah. Imagine when we were 13 years old. Like, people, some of us weren't even allowed to have Facebook because we were too young. And now it's, like, eh. Yeah. Um, I don't care. It's like, that's a bad thing now. Yeah. Imagine... We come to a time where Facebook is a dad thing. Like, or a couple of years ago, my dad couldn't even use Facebook. I had to learn how to use Facebook. And now it's his thing. It's like Instagram. It's like, it's going to be all the moms. Like 10 yeah. years from now, like we'll be yeah. on like some like app. It's, it's built in your, like it's a chip in your brain. And imagine that's... all the apps that are going to be made that we're going to use. Like, like how, how much Instagram or social media platforms have affected our lives. And there was just, the crazy part about that too, right? So think about how we're going to no longer have Instagram and just think about how much like people have cried over not getting likes or on Instagram. Yeah. Like that, like a people big part get, like of, depression because they don't get in, their into likes. And it's like that, that is like really playing a big part on our like society and culture and like our mental well being is all these, like just all this, like, need to be defined even like with your degrees like people like get upset because they're like after college like again like my degree doesn't mean anything like that makes people upset because they put so much they put everything on such a high pedestal and then it never you'll never reach that pedestal and then you come crashing down but also it's like what what well like if your degree doesn't mean anything then like what do you have to show for for his years? No, it's everything else I learned. It's the journey. It's yeah, it's the journey. journey. It's like what do you what, what can you take from it that's not a piece of paper? Like like if you didn't have this paper now, would you say like you have gotten something else out than a degree? Like yes, a lot of social quality skills that you need. I think now that like I've been to so many different colleges, uh, I feel like I I've, I've done college. Like I've experienced college. I think there's really not much more in college for me. There's no more. I've done any kind of party. I've done any kind of one night stand. I've done any kind of relationship that you will get in college. And I've done all the classes. I feel like uh, there's really not much more from like I I pretty much have the piece of paper in the sense of like in my mind exactly. I have it where that like I don't need the piece of paper but like society won't give me a job per se in some fields without this piece of paper and I don't know if that's necessarily good hmm. no I I think um, I had that piece of paper a long time ago and I had it coming here too which has helped me a lot in different situations because people will base the assumption that like when I go back like I will do fine yeah. Like, they won't know. Like, half the people here won't even know what I'm doing in, like, a couple of years. But it's still, like, like they just made that assumption about because how I act and how I choose to portray myself and how people view me because of it. And, yeah, I think I think that, that like, piece of paper that we talk about, that fictive in your mind piece of paper, that that does a lot for who you're going to be and also what kind of job you're going to get. Like, you yeah. see, you'll see the difference between two people that have a 3.5 GPA based on like their experience of college and that's gonna it's not gonna decide but it's gonna 
definitely affect what type of job you get. But you need to look at life and per se, like if you work really hard, like you go to SNU and you get a three five because you are just like smart enough to beat the system, or you get a three five because you are at a at, you're at UMass Amherst Eisenberg, very prestigious business program and you're doing the work and you're working really hard to like you're studying all hours a night putting in so much work mm. like yes we both have a three five on paper but his work ethic is a lot more stronger per se yeah. than maybe mine but also maybe that means i'm not cut out to do that kind of work because i also don't think that half that crap means anything like to being like i'm gonna work really hard to get this three five to do this accounting job like okay you're getting paid more money but like I get to make podcasts. I get to go DJ. Like I get to go do things that personally I find fulfilling. And I think that's what we all should be striving for is being fulfilled, not really material. God, uh, like not mate- like a fake following in a sense. Like I don't want fans. I want people that respect me, mm. but I don't need everyone to respect me. I just, it's going to be hard. Yeah. <laughs> I know there's a lot of people out there who definitely do not respect me. And, uh, well, it's like, what are you going to do about it? Like, if, if you go around pleasing everyone, you're not going to please yourself. No. And I don't think you need to please everyone. And I don't think you should please yourself. But in a way that, like, I want my friends to respect me. And that's, like, the people close to me should respect me. And regardless, like, like, I can think you're doing something wrong. But that doesn't mean I don't need to respect why you're doing it, right? Yeah. Um, it's like, you could go do a job that, hey, man, I don't maybe would, I don't think that's important. But, like, I respect your decision. If you can tell me why you think I should respect your decision. And if I know you close enough, then I should just by knowing you, the person. But sometimes you don't know the person. I know Jesper's actions. Like, most of your friends, I'd say, in America, right? They know Jesper of the stories of Jesper and, like, what you tell them. But they probably couldn't tell you who Jesper acts. They can't define you. You should never be able to define, like, a person, I'd say. Uh, I read a... I don't remember where I read from, but it was someone that talked about how... Really true geniuses, they make you think they know you, or like you think you know them, but you know like actually nothing about them. Yeah, because it's so easy to like paint a picture of yourself, which is not true at all. But people they just don't really take that much, put that much time into getting to know people, so they just assume. Well, they like, ju- I could I could say I was a prince of Norway, and people would probably oh he's the prince of Norway, like you said so. Hey, he's not from this country. I've never like, met him yeah. before. Like, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna like. Why would you lie to me? No, like, why would I lie? Like definitely not to uh, someone I never met before. <laughs> I would never do that. I'm a very good person, and that's I think uh, one of the skills that I've learned too. Just going all over, it's like like I've, there got to a point too where it's like when you meet people, it's like do I want to tell? Like I could be like yeah, I've I've been in UMass Amherst the whole time. I've been at Arkansas the whole time. You just like, it's like, why would I need to tell you I've been at four schools? Because if I tell you I've been to four schools, that paints a really w- broad, weird f- picture in your head. You're like, why yeah. have you done this? What, what, like, how, what is going on there? And it's like, oh, but like, I can give you logical reasons if you know me. You're like, oh, Jack's pretty smart because it makes sense why he did these things. Whereas, like, oh, Jesper, he's from Norway. He probably is different than me because he's from a different country. Why is he different than me because we're a different country? It's like, I don't know. But no, yeah, it's, it's, it's funny. Like, uh, I think, yeah, there's an assumption when you hear someone go to four colleges, you obviously think either they did some really fucked up shit at, over and over again, or, yeah, I, don't, I can't really, I think, I think that's a general assumption. I don't think really there's anything else to think about, like, immediately that falls. If I hear four colleges and you're still finishing it in four years, that's that's pretty crazy, but, yeah, it's no, like prop, props to you for that. <laughs> I don't even know how to like. This, like I don't. It's weird. It's cool. I, Sometimes life is like that. You yeah. can't even explain it. Like, like, like when people ask me certain questions, how is life in Norway? It's, it's hard to, without having them seeing the same like mental pictures I do, explain what life is like in Norway. It's like I heard a really good um, like metaphor. It's like if you're a electrician, right? And I'm not an electrician, and we walk into a room and like. You're going to look at that room if you're an electrician because you're going to understand, like, like, you're going to see the world so different. It's like the first time, like, a better example. It's like your grandma gets, like, never seen a computer. You cop on your computer. You understand the Internet. Like, your grandma looks at this. It's like, what the hell is this thing? It's like, or like when you are speaking in a foreign language, it's like if you understand the language, you know what they're saying. If not, it just sounds like gibberish. So it's like when people don't understand something, it's very tough to, like, 
get them to like understand it unless they learn it for their themselves. Yeah. No, I think um, will I recommend going to the U.S. and study in college? Absolutely. But kids, think of where you're going. <laughs> Do some more research than I did. Like Snoot has been a great uh, experience. I it's all like I'm saying it's a bad school. I'm just saying that if you're looking for some quality academic games. <laughs> Look away. This is not the place for you. It's not even that it's a party school. Like it has a raw, lot of good opportunities, but it's. I wouldn't say it's like good on any. It's like very general American college. It's not good on anything particular, but it's like okay on most things. Like like the parties, eh, kind of whack. But like sometimes they're fun. <laughs> like if you're if you know how to do it, you can get a lot out of a degree here. But like you have to know the right people and like kind of pave your way. I gotta have to understand it, but like other than that, it's just like, well, it's a big online school, but it's it's nothing special. Like Snoo isn't like this is America. This is not what I'm like college. I would then I would probably look at a a bigger school, uh, like like, at, at, like UMass Amherst or like any school that's kind of like more of a college feeling because this is a very special type of college feeling. It's as you said, it's a small community. It's kind of dis like dislated. It's not like. It's anywhere close here. There's no like pub street. There's no like fraternity house street. It's it's not what we Norwegians think about college. But it's not what the average American student even thinks of no. college. It's not it's not what the the world portrays college as. Now you can get all the aspects of what it is. You can get all the the parties and the the like like you can get the bar scene. You can get all the stuff that you know that like what you seek in college, but. It's a lot different of a vibe. And as we're getting close to the end here, um, what would you say that now that you're going to graduate this semester, like, are you going to want to stay in America? Do you think you've, like, kind of experienced all of America has to offer to you? Obviously, you haven't been all around the country, but, like, do you feel the need to do that? Or do you want to do a master somewhere else? Or do you want to just go back to Norway? This is, like, the first movie, then me going to a uh, big college is, like, the sequel. Like, that is going to be, like, Jesper Tapes America Part 2. Where it will be, I'm not, I yet to find out, but I definitely won't be here, or who knows, if the school decides to just give me education for freedom, probably, but I don't see myself being here for more than a couple more months, and probably will be in the U.S. I do not feel ready to grow up and go home like with vacation time is not going to be over within four months so we will see but no. this will definitely not be the last time <laughs> uh, i step foot on american soil this is not the end of this the, is not the end the, the, the nor it's merely the start merely the start that's always good and then yeah any uh final points you'd like to talk about anything you just like any stories you want to tell about your experience as a foreigner or anything that you want other foreigners or people to like or just like as an american when i first meet a foreigner what like how should i approach it right if i'm like is there any way that you got like weird looks or anything obviously you're different like anything that you want to tell people in your position or people in my position well i want to say that it's one thing i learned from um, this is more of a, a tip to uh any college um kid who uh goes out a lot like i i i would say i work out on an average more than you more than most people and because of that, I take something called creatine. It's like a supplement uh, which makes you pee a lot, but therefore it makes you hydrated because you have to drink water all the time. And that is the one number one reason for why I can go out and party and not be hangover the next day. It's, it's a fantastic thing. Kids, if you want to get the most out of it, take creatine, stay hydrated, no hangovers. You can go on and on for four days in a row. That's, that's what we like to hear. And uh, any creatine companies, uh, we'd love to get sponsored. Jesper always loves money. He's, he's a great he's a great spokesman. You've heard him talk on this episode. Hopefully, uh, he's looking for a sponsor. Great, uh, great, great build. Great build. And, uh, yeah, anything else other than that? Um, that, like, you've been, so you've been happy, though. At the end of the day, you said you've enjoyed your college experience. America's been very good to you, you'd say. Yeah. I would just say that... It's been a, it's been a good time. It's been a short, somewhat short time, but yeah, I'm here for a good time, not for a long, long time. time. All right, everyone, remember, Azer Frassels, he gets 
Do you degrees? D's get you degrees. That's why I got D's get degrees. Can barely even say the sentence. Uh, Jesper, it's been a pleasure, sir, as always. Um, thank you for spending the time. And, thank you for yeah. having me. And uh, Seal, play us out. I think I'm never gonna dance again. Mankind won't be destroyed. The fact that you and I are working here.